Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad to have everyone here. Um, glad to have our quizzers in the front row representing. Welcome, kids. Oh, one clap. We got one clap. So, hey, will you guys stand as we uh, we'll, we'll begin worship?
Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for a chance to worship you. We thank you for a chance to learn about you. Lord, I pray that you just go before us service. Go before this worship. Help us to just worship you. Lord, I pray that you go before Pastor Marshall and help him just uh, teach your word that we might leave here change for you. We love you so much. In your name, amen.
Hey, you guys may be seated. Good morning. morning. Well, I had the honor of being part of our quiz meet yesterday with this lovely group here. Um, we have eight quizzers this year. Miss Audrey, come on up. <laughs> we have eight quizzers this year. Can you raise your hand if it is your first year quizzing? Woo. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then actually we had Brenna join us again this year. She took a uh, break last year, so we've got a pretty good group. Um, we did very, very well yesterday. So um, our quiz meet was out in Flushing. So it's about an hour, hour and 15 minute drive. So it's a little bit of a hike, but we had a great time. And um, we had two fabulous rounds. So let me get the breakdown real quick on my phone. Okay, so just to give you um, a little idea of what we're looking at, this, this year we're going through Matthew, and so um, the first five chapters are, they're stories that we've heard, but it really dives deeper into the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount, which the kids don't enjoy too much, but they did fantastic. There's a lot of remembering like the specifics. So when it came down to the quizzing, I was super proud of, of how well they did. Um, so the breakdown I will give you as we go through. Um, so the, the day we finished up with, um, we had one crystal from Nolan. Show it off. Hooray! <laughs> And then we had a bronze from Miss Audrey. <laughs> Roman got a silver. <laughs> and then we had a gold from Miss Nora. And right. she also had one perfect hey. round. And then we actually had gold all-stars, so they got none wrong um, for both rounds, and that was from Eva, Brenna, Silas, and George. So we all does anyone want to share what their favorite part from yesterday was? Oh, Nolan does. All right, Nolan, what was your favorite part? Quizzing. Quizzing? <laughs> wow, that's appropriate. You got one? Eating cookies. <laughs> Eating cookies, okay. Well, the kids are taught that, um, you know, it's not about how many you get right or wrong. It's just knowing God's word and being able to apply that and hide that in your heart every day. So we are so proud. So if you see them, let them know how proud you are of them. All right, thank you. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Let's give another round of applause as they're leaving. Yeah. Sorry, song guys, didn't mean to be clapping in the mic. So that is awesome news. Um, I remember my wife and I were working with quizzing years ago, and um, it's so encouraging to still see that program so, vib so vibrant and, and functioning, and it's such, a, it's such a great thing to have the kids studying God's Word for any reason. So we have several announcements I want to cover for you with you today. Um, these are things that you can get plugged into. If you are feeling like, hey, I am not plugged into anything. There's something I want to do. Look these over and, and figure out a good place where you think you might be able to fit in. If you don't feel like you're called to any of these things, come and participate. And I encourage you to talk to one of our pastors, and they're going to be happy to find a place to plug you in somewhere. But we'd love to have you involved in, in working with us. So our first one is about... Trunk or Treat. So um, this is going to be on the 29th. It's from 5 to 7 p.m. 
Um, this is where you come, bring your car, bring some candy, dress up or decorate your car. Um, we'll have a competition and, and vote for people with the best decorated car. Uh, we ask you to pass out some candy and also ask you to have a little activity, um, maybe to engage uh, the kids to also maybe have some time to talk with the parents or family that's with them, um, just to get to know them and just to sort of connect with our community. Um, we will also be doing a pumpkin carving contest. So if you want to bring your pumpkin and uh, we'll have a table and we'll have it set up for people to vote and we'll have a prize for the best decorated pumpkin as well. So I want to encourage everybody to uh, participate in those, those activities. Um, next, we have some missionaries that are coming up, uh, coming to visit with us on a Sunday morning on November 5th. The, name are, the names are Trina, Anna, and Jero. And I found out that their little girl there is a one-year-old, and her name is Leah. And I found out that uh, Trina, Trino, sorry, um, he was a missionary for 25 years in Costa Rica. And um, Anna is from Armenia. And they work together now uh, in the area of Eurasia. I'm like, okay. I don't remember seeing that in my ge geography class. This place is called Eurasia. So I looked it up real quick. And um, it actually covers nine countries uh, over in the European area, Armenia, Belarusia, Georgia, Latvia, Moldova, Russia, and Ukraine. Um, so they'll talk a lot about what they're, going to, what they're doing, what they're experiencing over there. And I know there's a lot of things happening in that part of the world right now, especially in the area of Russia and Ukraine we all have heard about. So i uh, be really interested to hear what they have to say. So we encourage you to come and support them and hear what they have to say and, and we'll have a love offering for them. And we also encourage you to invite any family or friends that um, you'd like to have come in and hear about this as well and get a chance to meet them and their family. Um, next, we're going to talk about the Victoria's Secret Sisters. So this is uh, um, a group of our ladies who have decided they're going to uphold and uplift other ladies in the church. Um, through prayer, through gifts, through various different means. Just remember them, let them know they're thinking about them. So we have a, a it's just a sort of a midterm luncheon just to sort of get together, or breakfast just to get together and spend some time. We do encourage you to bring a, a gift for your secret sister. We'll have a spot for you to put them separately so you can set them in when you walk in and they don't, everybody see you. We do encourage you to put them like in maybe a brown bag of some sort so that they can be hidden or something. Um, because if you see someone walking with a package and then you see someone else opening, you're like, oh, well, I know who that was. So we want to try to keep that somewhat hidden if we can. Um, then next we're going to talk about, um, I have an add-on announcement. Sorry, guys. Um, so the children have a movie day coming up on November 12th, and it's right after the morning service. Um, more to come on that information. Erica, that was just up here talking about the quizzers, uh, is, is heading that up. But we wanted you to have that in, in your radar so you know what's coming up and you can sort of plan for that. Uh, but there'll be, that'll be a fun time for the kids to uh, spend some time together and be here at the church and, and uh, take in a movie together and enjoy that fellowship. I uh, wanted to also briefly talk about uh, the month of October is Pastor Appreciation Month. So I wanted to talk about that and I wanted to find a couple of interesting things um, written by other pastors. that I just wanted to share with you. So one of them was, um, we fight the balance between pleasing people and pleasing God every day. Uh, what we do, we do because we love God and people. Trying to please both is a common reason for pastors to have a burnout, partly because um, they both want the same thing, and pleasing God always wins. But living with the pressure of trying to please God and people um, can be a, a very draining. Another one I thought was interesting was we often hear more negative than positive feedback. I find that interesting. Um, knowledge is power. So if you find yourself going to our pastors and you're always complaining about something, things need to be fixed, things need to be determined, things need to be shared. But always coming with a complaint and never a compliment can be draining, so keep that in mind. This is written by other pastors, not our pastors, by the way. This is written by other pastors about pastors in general. So just keep that in mind. I'm not saying everybody here is negative, but this is a common happening that happens among pastors and churches. Um, our families feel the weight of our calling more than they'll ever tell you. For those of you that have been pre uh, preacher's kids can, can attest to that. And for those of you who... Um, have, have been in the church for a long time, you, you probably have seen 
seen that, and I know the families would vouch for that as well. Um, many of them are professional extroverts. So what does that mean? So they love to be alone. They love to be private. They love to be in God's word and, and to study and to, to be self-indulged in that area. But you can't do that as a pastor. You have to be an extrovert. And so they have found the way to balance that. Many of them tend to be introverts but are professional extroverts and can get peopled out. You may have heard that term. Um, pastors know that they could get paid more if they did something else. It's not the highest paying profession. Uh, they do it because they're called and because they want to do it and they want to follow and serve God. Spiritual warfare is a way of life. This is true for all Christians, by the way. Spiritual warfare is a way of life. But there's a common belief, I don't have anything that I can document and prove to you, but there's a common belief that spiritual warfare is heavier on pastors and their families. Um, and we have to keep in mind that they're also human. Um, they're fighting their own sin too. Pastors are far from perfect. We have our sins, we have our, uh, we're always fighting our battles as well. Be patient and always pray for them. Taking a vacation is rarely a vacation. Uh, it takes about seven days to unplug for a meaningful and true vacation. It's hard for pastors to unplug when they go. It can take up to a week for us to unwind before we're fully present. I try to take, this person writing this, said, I try to take a two-week vacation a year just so that I can have one week where I'm trying to catch up and unplug and then another week to actually be there in my vacation and with my family and, and to truly be unplugged. But how many of us have jobs where three in the morning I get a call because someone's in the hospital, someone just died. Um, I get a call on a Saturday because someone wants me to perform a wedding. How many of those things happen to us in our regular work life where I'm a Monday through Friday eight to five person and you know, I, once I've been plugged, I'm done. That doesn't work for pastors, as we all know. And um, one of their greatest joys is when their sheep get it. Uh, people understand that we're disciplining them towards, or when a person gets salvation, we love it. But we also want this. We want them to know that love, um, that Christ is love, and we love it when they get it. So when they get the sermon, when they get the message, when they get the, the hint, when they get the clue, when they get the calling, when they get the passion, that's what they love. And that's their reward. So I just wanted to share a few things for you about maybe some of the inside world of the pastor's world. So just sharing information, take, the, take with that as you will. Um, I wanted to just a quick reminder, some things you can do this month. Um, you can pray for them. You can, um, there's a whole list of things up there. I'm not going to repeat what I said last week. But keep them in our prayers. And one of the things that stood out for me last week when Pastor Marshall was preaching, he was talking about the, the guy who wanted to have the demon cast out and the complaint was that the disciples couldn't do it. And if you keep reading through that scripture, they went to Jesus and said, we've cast out demons before, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus' response was, this type can only be done through prayer and fasting. So they could have all the power in the world, but prayer and fasting was important for that specific scenario so don't let, any, don't let anybody ever tell you that prayer and fasting doesn't work and that it's not meaningful. Pray for our pastors, pray for our members of our family, pray for each other, and don't minimize that in any way, shape, or form. On that note, we're gonna change the tone a little bit. I'm gonna ask the ushers if they would please go ahead and come forward. We're gonna collect this morning's offering. So bow with me as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for Sundays. We thank you for our pastors. We thank you for our blessings. We thank you for our country. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We ask you to please continue to bless us. We ask you to please be with each person here today or each person watching online. And as they feel so led to give money towards the church, Lord, to help our ministries and our different things that are going on and to help reimburse our pastors and to to help the work of the church to move forward for your, for your glory, Lord. We thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for all you've done 
and be with us the rest of today in thy name. Amen. you guys stand as we continue to worship?
we're going to bust out a new song right now. It's a beautiful, beautiful worship song. So if you don't know it, uh, just read the words and, and just kind of bask in the, in these lyrics. But it, it's a great song.
washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. Are you thankful for Jesus today?